The first thing I want to do in this episode is give a spoiler alert right away. We are talking about Superbon versus Marat Gagorin. If you don't want to know how this fight turns out, don't bother being here. Go watch the fight and then come back. But you definitely want to be here for this episode because we saw a display of the highest level kickboxing that I may have ever seen. Definitely one of the top five performances and you want to be here so I can break down exactly what happened and how you might be able to start putting this, putting these techniques, this overall display of excellence into your own game. So let's dive right into this fight breakdown. All right, everyone. One FC had their massive event on March 26. Crazy amount of fights. The whole cart went something like 10 hours and 40 minutes. And there were spectacular fights, no doubt. But performance of the night, in my mind, went actually to two fighters. One of the guys who's at my weight class in the kickboxing division. Now, I'll be honest with you, when I first looked at one and was considering them as a promotion, instead of karate combat, I went, who's the champion? Can I beat him? And I saw a Thai guy named Capitan, I believe, and I went, this guy's good, but I think I can beat him. And if I sign up with 1FC, I think I can go get that title. But then over the weekend, a Japanese fellow defeated him, and this guy was sharp, crazy sharp, where I was watching him going, oh, I would have my work cut out with for me. I'd have to basically put on the best performance of my entire career to go in and know I can defeat this guy. So if you have not watched that yet, make sure you go and do it. Amazing performance. But we are talking today about Superbon. Now, he faced Marat Gagorian. If you don't already know, about four or five years ago, he was KO'd in about 30 seconds by Marat Gregorian. Gregorian has been on a crazy streak, just looking so good over the past few years. But Superbon, who is dubbed the next Bacau, and I was a little skeptical of that when I heard it. I went, ah, he's good, no doubt. But as good as Bacau, I don't think so. But he's had a chance to show how good he is now. And he went and defeated Georgia Petrosian, which made him essentially the best in the world. And then he was up against Marat Gagorin, who people were also saying is the king of the 70 kilo division. And he made it not look easy, but he picked him apart. And the most incredible thing is he picked him apart with basically single techniques. It wasn't like he went in and he comboed up. He threw the same technique over and over and over. And we have to go in and break down exactly what happened. Now, I wish I could just play the full fight for you guys and you could watch it. But, you know, YouTube rules. I can't do that. I don't want to steal from 1FC. Obviously, they're doing an incredible job. So we will take clips of the fight. I will show you what we're talking about. And then I will break down, hopefully help you understand what Superbon was doing and why he is so incredible. And before we dive into the fight, if you guys would not mind giving this video a like, this is going to take a lot of work. This episode, a lot of editing, a lot of clips, and every extra like is appreciated. If you have not already, join the channel, get subscribed. Give me that little boost up to 100,000. We're so close, like two or 300 more subscribers, and we are there. Super exciting. So let's dive in to this fight, and I appreciate everybody who takes the time to just click, click. It's awesome. All right, within the first minute, I noticed something super interesting about Superbon's style for this fight. And I was a little curious what it was gonna be because he has to stop Marat from walking straight in and letting those lethal combos go. So what I noticed straight away about Superbon is he was using three main things to control distance. Number one, that nice front kick. He has that front kick which he was popping out, but just throwing a front kick in itself is not exceptional. And we need to look at what he's doing in addition. The head placement was very interesting to me. It's very rare where we see somebody take their head and not keep it right between their hips, but go in a stance where the head is actually over or in front of the lead foot. I don't see this very often. And I go, okay, I can't 100% remember if this is the way he always fights, but it's great for distance control because what this allows him to do now is from here, he can reach with his jab. So now he has this to post out and hit the guy with, but if at any time he feels the attack come, he's able to move his head back and he doesn't need to drop his hands to do it. He can just lean back with his hands up. And we saw numerous times where Marat attacked 
and missed because Superbon just changed that head distance. And then in addition, once he's done jabbing, if he feels like, okay, I need to lean back and throw the front kick, he's now putting himself back at that appropriate range where he can throw the jab, but also land the front kick at the same range. And that usually doesn't happen. Usually what happens is I throw my jab, and if I try to throw the teep, I'm too close. I'm jammed up but he's throwing both of them at the same distance, which makes it very difficult for Marat to deal with the front kick and to get past the jab, which is sticking in his face. And then, like we said, when Marat goes on the attack, Superbon just tips that head back and is completely out of range. Great distance control within the first minute of the fight. Next, I wanna move into round two, and I wanna get in detail about the front kick because when I saw a lead up video to this fight, I saw Superbon training with Nam Saknoy, who was somebody that Bokao used to train with, just a legend in the sport. So many wins, something like 300 plus wins and so few losses. Anyway, when I saw them training together, I saw Superbon throwing the lead leg front kick, lead leg front kick, just letting that over and over and over go. And I went, hmm, I wonder how that's gonna work against Gregorian will it be able to be effective? And it was one of the key elements to his victory. So I wanna get into, is there anything unique about it? Now, the first thing that I notice when I watch Superbon throw this front kick, is it's not like Bokao's front kick. You know, you see Bokao throw and his leg comes up and he fires out. And when he throws, you're like, oh my gosh, it looks like he's trying to put a hole in your stomach. But when Superbon does it, he's just kind of touching. And I think the lack of like firing it in and lifting really fast did not get the response from Marat that you might normally see if he's really scared of the kick, where he might start you know, blocking like that or trying to scoop. He really did nothing about it throughout the fight. And the pace of the front kick that Superbon was throwing was just very interesting to me. But what he did so well was alternate between legs. So he will maintain the distance, maintain the distance. Now I always teach people defensively, you use your front leg offensively you use your back leg why do you do this well when i shift my foot over the back leg it gives me more distance to stop this guy from rushing in and being able to hit me but when i shift my weight to the front leg to throw my back i get closer so you do not want to use this one as your defensive kick you want to use your back leg as your offensive kick so we see super bond fire defensively maintain range maintain range and then cover that extra maybe nine inches and just boom, power through with the back leg. His ability in the second round to switch between legs, to utilize that lead foot front kick, to just place out in Marat's stomach and disrupt his rhythm was phenomenal. Super high level stuff, which again, I think led him to winning the fight. And I can't honestly answer you why we did not see Marat do something about that front kick. I would feel like like one kick, two kicks. After the third one, I'd be trying to catch. Although I guess on one FC, you're not supposed to catch. So then I'd be trying to scoop or hollow out or do something. And we didn't really see too much of that from Marat. And the only thing I can figure out about it, why he was not trying to answer that, is basically the kick was not super damaging. He went, oh, this front kick isn't hurting me and I don't need to bother blocking. Other than that, I don't have an answer for you because you think at least dropping elbows, getting some good block on them would make more sense. So I think not throwing 100% by Superbon might have been a good strategy game plan, which he implemented. Now next, I want to look at this clip of Superbon picking Murat apart with single shots. And I think this was a very good strategy, very interesting strategy by Superbon to basically not throw combos in the fight. Why would you not want to throw combos? Well, if you're somebody who's dealing with an opponent like Marat Gagorin, when you get in tight, that's not what you want. And as soon as Superbon goes one, and then two, and then three, and he starts stringing together combinations, he doesn't have that ability to hit and pull back if needed, or to hit and pull back if needed. He does not have the same defensive abilities. So we see Superbon not engaging in combos where that counter from Marat can come, but throwing single shots over and over and over. And the timing is kind of like hit, hit, Hit. And I want to show you this clip of him executing so nicely. He starts with the stiff arm, throws a single counter cross, front kick, and then moving around a little bit. Again, back to the stiff arm, jab, 
Round kick high, front kick to the body, front kick to the body, just making life very difficult for Murat because Murat is trying to move into striking distance, but every time he does, he gets hit. He resets. He tries to move forward. He gets hit, has to reset. It's a very good strategy by Super Bond to be able to be offensive, but minimize the counter abilities of Gregorian. Now, something else I want to focus on, which is not really a genius move by Super Bond by any means, but we do need to recognize that instead of fighting, in the ring, they are fighting in an MMA cage. And in my mind, this does make a difference because we see Marat have a lot of difficulty trying to pin Superbon anywhere. Superbon's movement is very good. A couple times he gets his back close to the cage, but he just angles off. It is much easier to angle off in a cage where there's no corner as opposed to the ring. So I just think that's worth noting. I don't think the fight would have gone massively different if they had fought in the ring, but I do think it would have given a little bit more of an advantage to Gregorian to try and find that corner and hold Superbond there. Now, as we move into round three, something that I want to focus on is Superbond's ability throughout the fight to utilize or to prioritize at least what it seems one technique over and over and over per round. And in round three, we see him really start to light Gregorian up with the left round kick. Different slightly than Bokao's round kick. When Bokao throws his left round kick, very often he's using it offensively and he'll do a switch of his stance and then let that kick fly out. But Superbon was going straight off it. No skip most of the time, just placing it in. And he was letting Marat come to him and then stopping him with essentially that defensive left round kick. What I noticed again, which was very interesting throughout the fight, is the front kick was not thrown with a lot of intensity. It was just placement, placement, placement. And the left round kick also was just placement, placement, placement. But if you hit somebody with Super Bond's skill set, you know, 50 times with the round kick, even if it's not his 100% power, it's like 60, 70, it's still gonna add up and it's still going to score, especially when that body of Marat, the arm, starts to light up in red. Did Superbond do anything massively exceptional to make this kick happen? Not really. I mean, I look at the technique and I see him execute and execute. The only thing he's doing super well, which a lot of people struggle with, is to basically put at least amount of effort the least amount of pre-movement in the technique, basically meaning that it's hard for Murat to see coming because Superbond's just there and he just, boom, boom. That's all he's doing. There's no skip beforehand. There's no preload of the arms. He's not doing anything he doesn't have to. And he always gets his head just safely out of punching range by just tipping his head back that tiny little bit. And this fight to me, this display by Superbond just demonstrates to me how important getting down the basics are and working to perfection because that's all he's doing. He's not demonstrating new techniques. He's not throwing a left round kick that is faster or harder or anything than anybody else out there. He's just throwing beautiful technique proper head movement, leaning back out of range, proper arm motion, simplifying the technique as much as possible. That's basically it. Everything he does in this fight is simple, but as perfect as could possibly be. Now the defensive question for me was going to be massive, especially as we move into round four and we see Marat have that need, that essential need to score a knockdown because most likely he's already down three rounds. We know he's gonna come out, he's gonna bring the pressure. And the question is, how is Superbond gonna respond? Especially last time when he made a vital mistake of getting hit and having his hands out here and then the follow-up knocked him out completely. When you are a Muay Thai fighter, very often in my experience, the mistake that comes against a good boxer is the hands are not able to stay super tight, they start to disconnect, but they don't disconnect fully. When you're out here, you can be very safe if you know how to implement the long guard, but in here is very dangerous. We see Superbond defensively do a very sound job of when Marat moves in, he stays tight. If he can't get that initial head movement backwards, which we talked about, he'll stay tight and then he'll start to lengthen out or he'll stay tight, he'll wrap up and really jam the distance. But he does not stay in that zone where Marat can just move in and hit right here. Either he's getting jammed or he's getting that stiff straight arm which is making it hard to get around. And in addition to that, Superbond utilized some beautiful just little side steps. If Marat came in and he blocked, he just side steps around. That is difficult, but again, not something that everybody out there can't learn. 
You just need to start implementing it into your training. Somebody walks towards you, you have your hands up. Don't drop your weight and stay here. You drop your weight and you catch an angle. Even if you get hit a couple times as you're taking that angle, it's better than just staying here. Or you stiff arm out and then you cut your angle. And it's just a matter of being able to implement the footwork with the defense. You put those together, you're much harder to hit. Now, I already mentioned that throughout the fight, Superbon had techniques that he almost seemed to focus on. Obviously, he didn't throw the left round kick again and again and again and again. That's all he did, but he really starts prioritizing certain techniques. In the fourth round, once his front kicks are not going to land quite as easy and Murat's starting to really go, okay, I have to be aware of these, then Superbon starts going fake into the right knee and he starts closing that distance and finding the opening with a different attack. That to me is a very smart fighter and this is a very nice fake that everybody should try to utilize at some point. You need to make sure that your sparring partner or opponent is already scared or if not scared, aware of this front kick which is coming out they have to know that that's a danger and then when you come to here you see that response from them and instead of throwing the kick anyway you lift and then you close the gap and step through it and Superbon always does a magnificent job of utilizing long arms when he throws his knee to make sure that he's not in that zone where he's going to get countered easy we have to make sure that when we step forward and we come to here Hands are either coming across our face or we're jamming and landing the shot and making it very difficult for the counter shots to come back. He did this fantastically in the fourth round. And really overall, my analysis of this fight was simple techniques executed as perfect as could possibly be. I don't really have too much else to say. It's not a genius game plan in the sense they came out and they executed something which we've never seen. He just stuck to the basics and he did them super well. Well at the same time, not letting Marat get those shots off on him, which means his defense being on point is also a massive credit to him getting this win in this dominant fashion. Super Bond is no doubt a master of the sport. And you know, in the past people saying that he is the next Bukau, I would say yes, now we can actually say this guy is as good as Bukau, maybe not in the exact same ways, not better than Bukau's left round kick or better than Bukau's front kick, but skill level wise and being as dominant as Bukau, yes, I think we can say that he is right up there with the legend, which we all love. Hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. Keep in mind that the basic offense is super important, but Super Bono would not have been able to execute this amazing offensive display if his defense was not on point. And I always stress that, and I'm gonna continue to stress it on the channel, Offense is half of it. Defense is the other half. And we saw this with Super Bond. He was not getting smashed. He was not getting hit. And then he was able to utilize that beautiful offense. So remember to train defense over and over and over. It doesn't have to always be with somebody, although that is better. But if you're on the bag and doing your front kicks, your front kicks think, oh, he's coming at me. Oh, post up. Front kick, front kick, little step back, shuffle in, front kick, angle step and you're constantly thinking defensively because there's no doubt in my mind Superbon was doing that every time he threw a technique. He lands a round kick, he's ready for a defensive move. He lands a round kick, ready for a defensive move. He lands a round kick, Marat attacks, and he's ready for his defensive move. You have to think defensively even when you're being an offensive fighter. When you're attacking, you think defensively, you're not gonna get hit in the way that you normally would. And some of the best in the world, Petrosian, Floyd Mayweather, they demonstrate that all the time. They throw and then they whoop, out of the way. They throw shots, boom, boom, they angle off. You're like, how did they do that so fast? Well, they were already thinking about it. So I hope everybody enjoyed this breakdown of Superbond's display of excellence at 1FCX. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like haven't already joined the channel, get subscribed. Train hard guys, I'll see you back here soon for another video.